Hey guys, in today's video, we are talking about what color space you should be working in to make sure that you can get consistent colors throughout your entire timeline and make sure that all your color corrections and lots that you're working with and everything is worked with inside of the same color space. What is a color space? I just did another video on Rec. 709, so we won't go that much into that. But basically a color space is kind of like a translation from an interpretation of color into another one. So I see it a little bit as like a language exchange. So you can translate Chinese, Spanish, Danish, whatever into English. And then if you speak English, then we can all understand each other. And that's kind of how I see color spaces as well. It takes it from one language, usually the language of our camera manufacturer and how they decided to capture the color, sometimes tone it a little bit and sometimes work with it. But especially when we're working with log or raw footage, it's important to translate the colors and the color spaces into a color space that we can understand. And why is that important? because our displays can only show a certain amount of colors. Our cameras record a lot more colors than our displays can actually show. So by translating our footage or, our, or the colors that our cap camera captured into a color space, Rec. 709 usually, as that's the industry standard, that way we make sure that when our timeline or when our footage, our color grade is exported, it looks like it did on our Rec. 709 or sRGB monitor. You can look into that previous video if you want to and get just a little bit more in depth of what we're talking about there. But today we're going a step further. So we still want our final output to be Rec. 709. But if you look at the screen here, if you edit and color grade in DaVinci Resolve, as I recommend that you do, and that will be the only reason that this video actually applies to you. But you can see that Rec. 709 is what we have in here on this picture that I found on the internet, it's quite a small color space. And in this case of what we are seeing here, the smallest of them. But if we're then looking at the Vinci white gamut, that is a very large color space with a lot of information, a lot of color available. And that means that if we're working inside of that color space, we can make sure that all of our colors are interpreted and work with in the same way in a large color space before we put it into Rec. 709. So what do I mean by that? I mean, if we have different footage, let's say in my case, I usually have footage both from my drone, DJI Mavic 2 Pro, and my camera, a Canon R6. Those two manufacturers capture color and interpret color in different ways. We can still put both of them into Rec. 709. If you watch my previous video, you'll know that you should do that in the end. And then you work in that color space, in the camera's color space beforehand. So you're actually seeing the output in the Rec. 709, but you're still working with the colors inside of the camera manufacturer's color space. But what the issue is here is that now, if you want to make sure that you have the same colors, you can't do the exact same thing because DJI has done one thing and Canon has done another thing. So the colors won't match up exactly because the cameras have captured them differently. So what can we do about that? We can use that big, large, nice color space called DaVinci White Gamut. So let's jump into DaVinci. Let me just show you what we're talking about. Now we're inside of DaVinci Resolve and I still have the timeline open from my previous video. So in this case, let me just turn off the first one. This last note here converts our footage from Canon Cinema Gamut to Canon Log 3, then into Rec. 709 and Gamma 2.4, which is what most displays can show. So that's kind of like the industry standard. That's what we want to output for to make sure that everyone can see the colors as we saw them on our display. Making sure once again, that our display is set up to show sRGB or Rec. 709, same thing. So what happens here is that I, still, I have this note and this in the previous video, I showed you the difference between using Rec. 709 first and last. But now I wanna change this up. So I wanna still have Canon Cinema Gamut here, Canon Log 3. That's the input, That this is the first note. So this is what is inputted into my note. This is my footage. Now I wanna turn that into DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate for the Gamma. So when I turn this on, it'll still not look correct because this note here is still expecting to receive Canon Cinema Gamut and Canon Log 3. And it's not right now because this note outputs DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. So if I change this up to go to DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate, now I have a color space that I'm working within that is taking my Canon footage, Canon color space and gamma into this node, converting it 
into DaVinci White Gamut and so DaVinci Intermediate. Then I make my changes in here and then I output it into this node that then takes the DaVinci White Gamut, which is what we're working with in here, and turns it into Rec. 709 and Gamma 2.4. So I hope you're still with me, but that means that everything that we're doing in here that we're working with in here is now in DaVinci White Gamut, which is one color space. So if we take any footage that we have, a drone footage, put it through the same pipeline, it will be and stay inside the same color space. Now, this lot that I've used here is one from my new Cinepack that will come out very soon. And that's not set up necessarily for interpreting or working inside of DaVinci White Gamut because I want it to be broader and wanted to be able to work with more. But if we turn our Rec. 79 conversion off, we can see that it's not exactly lock. If we turn this off, this is lock. This is what my camera captured in lock. And now this is what it looks like in DaVinci White Gamut. And now it's in Rec. 709. So the colors have been interpreted in a certain way. And now we're working with them in here. So you can actually find colorists like Colin Kelly that has made specific lots that are working inside DaVinci White Gamut to make sure that the colors are interpreted and work with in the exact same way every time you do it, which is quite an effective way to work. And if you're going to be a pro colorist, that's definitely the way to go. And even if you're not, I would still recommend doing this. Ever since I found out about this, I've been doing it and I've been very, very happy with the results because I know now that all my footage, even though some comes from DJI and some comes from Canon, and even when I work with something like Sony footage sometimes or Lumix footage, Panasonic, I still know that it'll be inside the same color space because I make this transformation in the beginning. So I just wanted to show you that and share that with you because that's quite powerful when you're color grading inside of DaVinci Resolve. It's changed a lot for me. It's made it so much easier and I definitely recommend checking it out. And I hope you can hear from what I've told you that it makes sense to do. I hope it makes sense for you. Otherwise, you're welcome to shoot some comments down below and I'll be happy to answer. I'll be happy to explain further and kind of like help you figure out what this is all about. So without dragging it out anymore, I just wanted to say thank you for watching and until the next time, take care.